Hi, I'm Marcia Toussaint. I currently have a show in the Open Dresser Gallery called The Fallibility Cabinet, which is largely about all forms of collapse. So I've made a little activity to share with you that is about making your own collapse collage. Technically, they're not collages, they're actually photo montages because we'll be putting images together. What you'll need for this activity is for sure a pair of scissors and a glue stick, and then if you happen to have it, a cutting mat and a scalpel and a ruler are very useful. You'll need to collect all kinds of periodicals that you can cut out, so whatever you have in the house. I have National Geographic's um, a food magazine, fashion magazine, an art magazine, and just regular newspapers. I've you know, often asked friends and neighbors if they have magazines to give me because it's harder these days actually to find printed material to cut out. So when you do have it, instead of just recycling it, if you're into collage or photo montage, you might want to start putting it to the side. So you'll want to just go through magazines initially and just cut out loads of images. So don't worry too much about what they are, I'd say, just cut out anything that catches your eye. And since I have a particular focus on uh, environmental issues, I have found quite a few of those. But other times I also just cut out, you know, random pictures, vegetables, um, flamingos, bottles that seem interesting and that I could use at a later date. And when you have a nice big collection, you have more to work with. So the activity that we're doing today is inspired by a series of collages made by an American artist called Martha Rosler. So if you haven't come across her work before, they are very strong images where she is making comments about uh, America during the Vietnam War and really trying to bring what's happening into the news literally into the living room in these collages. So she found lots of images that, I don't know if they were from women's magazines or interior magazines and often they're like a lovely stylish living room and there's a beautiful woman who's you know the owner of the house in, the, in that era maybe the housewife who's either like hoovering or doing something this one's pulling the curtain away to reveal her beautiful view but instead of a beautiful view we're seeing soldiers in the street we're seeing fire probably from some kind of bomb and a woman in the corner who's mourning. So obviously not too subtle, but definitely making her point that we need to be paying attention to what's happening in the world, even outside of our homes. So along those lines, I thought what we do today is something quite similar. And you just need to find some images, which are very common in magazines of interiors. So as long as there's a window or a door or something looking out, it doesn't have to be a house, it could be any, any place. And then what you're gonna do is go ahead and cut out the window or the door. This is a bit complicated because it's got um, glass. Um, so if I really took my time, I would cut those out as well. And I would cut out the view that's really open so that then I can just have a window that I could see right through. So you can either do that with scissors, if that's what you have, in which case if you just kind of don't fold but bend your paper into make a window and then you can just carefully start to cut uh, along, along the opening. But if you do have a scalpel and a ruler, that can go a lot more quickly like this. Just holding your ruler carefully, pressing in. If you have a cutting mat, you're kind of pushing into the mat so that the scalpel doesn't jump around and keeping your fingers out of the way. So for now, to not waste too much time, I'm just going to do this main opening and show you how it looks. So I definitely learned the hard way about keeping your fingers out of the way when you're cutting. So please do be careful. I'm not going to worry about the handle of this door because it's just too fiddly. Too fiddly. And then here where there's something round, I'm going to go around it and then just be a bit careful along here and then you can see so I have a window now that could be looking outside. I'm not going to use this one because it would take too long but I do have some other ones. So 
This is one I found that's a country house and the view originally was looking out at <clears throat> beautiful vineyards and things. But instead I'm going to see what happens if I put some different views outside. So this is an image from after the fires in Australia last year. And the things that you have to think about when you're trying to create your image is in, in Martha Rosler's and in mine, I'm, I'm trying to make it look slightly realistic that you could be looking out the window and seeing that perspective. So if you're looking too much from above or your the point of view is too close to the ground or the window feels like it would be on the third floor, but you have ground outside, those are all issues to think of. So this one actually just, out of luck works pretty well. I feel like I could be looking out this window and see this view and it would tell a whole story and I would realize that this house was lucky but the neighbors houses were not. So that's one possibility. Um, it can be interesting to also have maybe one image be black and white and the other image be in color so that you get a striking difference that way. So here I have an old black and white image. I'm not even sure what that's from building submarines or something, but it looks like something went wrong. So that could be potentially interesting as well. Let's see, I have a view of some floods outside. See there, I think the perspective is just too weird. Like, where would this house be that I would be looking down on those roofs out the front door? It doesn't really make sense, so I'd save that for something else uh, here instead. This I think really could work. And part of the reason that it works is it feels like I could be looking out of that. And also I like the fact that it's a little bit more on the blue green side compared to this orangey room. And just one more thing that you can think about if I decide that that, that is something that works for me, but it feels a bit small in the middle of the image, you can take L shapes, which are just cutting L's out of a piece of paper and then play around a bit with cropping it and think about if it would work better if it was vertical or if it was horizontal, but it was just a little smaller. And then once you find what you like, say I like that, then um, I could just draw with my pencil around here and then cut out that shape. So I'm going to show you one other, and then hopefully this is something that you'll do on your own. This is another image that that was interesting. It is a, a woman playing the flute in a flowing beautiful dress in this grand room. And there are big windows, which I like. They used to have trees outside of them. And I like that it's black and white because it seems like that could be interesting with different colors outside the window. So I have a few options that I'm gonna play with. One is this image of a hurricane, so I'm kind of moving it around and thinking where it could maybe be interesting if I did have that boat outside. I can use a piece of paper to block that off. That could be interesting. I quite like the color outside and it looks um, yeah, like something has happened that either she's coming to terms with or she's ignoring. Hard to tell. Could do something a little less realistic. This is an image of a COVID patient. It's black and white, but a slightly different tint to it. Um, so what, what kind of image does that become? It's not realistic. It's more psychological or surreal, and it suggests very different things. So what, what is she, how is she in relation to this person? And is it somebody that she knows? Is she playing music for her? It's a very different kind of story comes out. Whereas this one is more realistic. It feels like it could be outside the window from the perspective. It's kind of the right size and the right angle. And even this man who's spraying with water feels like he could be outside the window. He's that much smaller than she is. And I like the fact that it's got this intense color, yellows and oranges and reds compared to the black and whites. So this one, I, I would say works. So this one, I would probably at this point take my image, go to the back, glue around all the edges a little more carefully than that, and then actually glue it on. 
and then I have my collage. So there you go. I hope that gives you a little inspiration to make your own collapse photo montages. Thanks for watching.